The video you currently see here is a demonstration of the VHS effect that I will be showing you how to do in this video. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the NTSC Q2 GitHub repository. From there, you can download the Windows version or whatever operating system you're using, because this will be the basis of the video portion of our effect. Once you open NTSC QT, click Open File, then scroll to your video file. Now, I personally use the Master Nama preset, as it tends to go to where I would gravitate around for a realistic VHS. However, you can use whatever preset you want. For this demonstration, we're using the Master Nama preset. Now, you can see there, I have selected my video, click the Master Nama preset, and then I normally click Pro Mode because I can go modify the head switching and if it's on NTSC output. Disabling NTSC output changes how the head switching effect looks, which you will, I will demonstrate here. And then, if you move the head switching speed down until you can get it to where you want, then set it back to zero, ta-da! You have an effect there. Now, once you have it like this, you can render. However, the amount of time it takes varies a lot, depending on how powerful your device is, depending on how much you have the render height at, a lot of things. Now, this video, I was going to estimate around 5 minutes, 6 minutes to finish. And after those 6 minutes, I will see you here and I'll show you what the video looks like while talking about it. In this video here, you can see a hit switching effect. Along with that, color bleed is visible. And to add on to that, ringing very faintly is visible in the video. Now, you may be asking, where's the audio? Well, audio isn't done by NTSC QT. Now, normally, it will export the default audio that came with the video, but didn't seem to do it here. So instead, we're gonna do what I do for every video. We are going to import the video, it's audio, into Audacity, and just apply the filters there. Now, what I normally do is I come into Audacity here, and if you have FFmpeg installed, you can just directly import the video like this. Now, now you have it here as audio. Now, normally, the first thing I ever do is I go straight and find a baseband artifact. Now, there's one I've used in all these videos, and it comes from an AVI synth plugin I actually originally was planning to use for this. However, I never got it to work properly, so I just never went with it. However, the sounds it comes with are very useful, like this. Now, normally, I then loop this, I would say, as many times. I'll normally overdo it, but then I'll just delete those. Then, you want to go on turn it down, because that's going to be way too loud for most people. In this still image, you Now, you can do this, and mix down render. Now... Another effect I apply is a low pass effect of 8,000 hertz, like this. I apply it a few times most of the time. Then, I apply a filter curve of this, just once. And, and to just top it off, I, I apply a flutter effect like this, which I will put this in the description so you can, guys can use this. Ta-da. This is how I get the effect. In this still image, the autopilot is on. The airplane had been vectored. So, I'll show you what the finished result looks like, or a portion of the finished result. In this still image, the autopilot is on. The airplane had been vectored to a 14-mile long final approach, and through a sequence of speed and configuration changes, the flight had diverged well above the desired glide path and was descending too slowly. As the animation begins, the landing gear was extended and the pilot monitoring remarked that they were a little high. The pilot flying 
said he would descend more and selected 1,500 feet per minute descent rate in the autopilot. As you can see in the profile view, this did begin to bring the airplane back toward the desired glide path. The speed was 15 knots below the desired approach speed and rapidly dropped. However, about six 11 seconds before impact, an audible alert sounded because the airspeed was too low. Four seconds later, the pilot monitoring advanced the thrust levers followed by stick shaker activation and a verbal call to go around. These actions were too late and the main gear and the underside of the aft fuselage struck the seawall.